Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Sleep Safety and Sleep Tips from Birth to Four Years, sponsored by ISIS Parenting and presented by Dr. Erin Flynn Evans as part of the Babies R Us Safety Month. My name is Teresa Stewart, and I am the Program Manager of Safety, Wellness, and Sleep Support here at ISIS Parenting. ISIS Parenting is pleased to offer this webinar. ISIS is the nation's most trusted prenatal and early parenting destination. We partner with hospitals to provide innovative programs, classes, and services around childbirth, breastfeeding support, and infant and toddler sleep, as well as early parenting and developmental programs. We offer classes and a highly edited selection of products for expecting and new families in our centers and online at isisparenting.com. In addition to our four Boston area locations, ISIS Parenting has recently opened nine nests located within Babies R Us locations. We offer prenatal and new parent programs in private classrooms at these beautiful new centers. Come see ISIS Parenting at Babies R Us in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and in Atlanta, Georgia. Visit our website at isisparenting.com to learn more. As I mentioned, I'm Teresa Stort, and I'll be your moderator today. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Erin Flynn Evans. Dr. Flynn Evans has worked in the field of sleep medicine for over 10 years. She was an instructor in medicine in the Division of Sleep Medicine at Harvard Medical School and recently left to lead her own research lab. Her work on sleep and the consequences of sleep loss has been published in the New England Journal of Medicine, Sleep, and the Journal of the National Cancer Institute. She has been featured in the Boston Globe and Boston Magazine. She is on the Clinical Advisory Board of ISIS Parenting and helped to develop the ISIS Sleep Support Program. She has worked with thousands of families across the country and the world around infant and toddler sleep issues. Welcome, Dr. Flynn Evans. Thank you very much, Teresa. I'm very excited to be here and to talk about infant sleep safety. I'm going to present an overview of safe sleep from birth to around four years. And so we'll start with the AAP guidelines. In 2011, the American Academy of Pediatrics published updated evidence-based guidelines on the prevention of sudden infant death syndrome and sudden unexpected infant death syndrome. Research has demonstrated that both of these outcomes share risk factors, and the most important safety uh, recommendations identified by the task force include back to sleep for every sleep, use a firm sleep surface, room sharing without bed sharing, keep soft objects and loose bedding out of the crib, offer a pacifier at sleep time, avoid overheating and exposure to tobacco smoke, alcohol, and illicit drugs. A triple risk model has been proposed for SIDS. The risk factors that I just described are included here as outside stressors. Essentially, this triple risk model shows that there are some components that cannot be changed, such as whether a given infant is vulnerable to SIDS, but the risk factors that have been identified are modifiable, meaning you can do things to lower your baby's risk, like offering a pacifier, abstaining from smoking, and you can create a safe sleep space. I'll go through the risk factors and how to do this. It's also important to note that the period of vulnerability is up to a year, so these guidelines are important to follow until that time or until your pediatrician advises you otherwise. The AAP recommends back to sleep for every sleep. It's important to note that this is not always recommend the recommended sleep position, and many of today's grandparents were told to place their own children on their stomach for sleep. Subsequent research has demonstrated that back sleeping reduces the risk of SIDS, so it's important to let grandparents know about this change. Some parents may also be concerned that their baby will choke on spit up while sleeping on their back, but this has been shown not to be the case. If your baby isn't sleeping well, it can be tempting to try new sleep positions, but it really isn't worth it. Side sleeping is not a safe alternative, and you don't want your baby to roll forward and face plant. Pacifiers, on the other hand, have been shown to reduce the risk of SIDS, so you sh should consider offering a pacifier, but don't do so until once breastfeeding has been established. Breastfeeding also lowers the risk of SIDS, so it's important to make sure that you have the breastfeeding well established before you introduce the pacifier. It is also important that you use a firm, separate sleep space, and room sharing without bed sharing is recommended. You can bring your baby into your bed for soothing and for feeding, but return your child to his or her own sleep space for sleep. 
It's very important to keep soft objects out of the crib and don't use crib bumpers. Cooler temperatures are safer than warmer temperatures for sleep, and babies sleep better in a cooler room anyway. So it's definitely important to keep that room cool. Your child should only wear one layer more than you, and you should check for overheating by feeling your child's chest. It's important not to cover your baby's head, and you should consider using a cool mist humidifier if you live in dry air conditions. Antique cribs can be very beautiful, but they're really not OK for sleep. It's important to check the current safety guidelines. Um, there are recalls that happen often. So check cpsc.gov for those recalls. And make sure that you use a snug fitting mattress with no gaps along the sides. And fitted sheets should have deep pockets so that the sheets stay on the mattress. Swaddling can help young babies sleep longer, and everybody benefits from that. When you're swaddling, use a lightweight fabric and use either a, a nice tight swaddle method or a specifically made swaddle product to avoid loose blankets in the crib. You want to make sure that your baby has room for hip movement when swaddled. And it will be important to stop swaddling when your child is rolling, which usually happens around four or five months. During your child's life, particularly during the first year, your child will make some sleep transitions. You may start with your child in a bassinet right next to your bed, and then transition your baby to an independent crib. Then you'll transition your baby from your room to the nursery. And you may also decide to transition your child to share a room with an older sibling. If you do make that transition with an older sibling, you want to make sure that your older child is mature enough to share a room. You don't want your curious young toddler climbing into bed with your young baby. You want to make sure that not only do you have a safe, flat sleep surface for your child to sleep in, but also that your child's sleep environment remains safe. A good sleep tip is to keep bedtime and morning wake time to within about a 30-minute window. And that will help you not only establish a bedtime and a wake time, but also will allow napping to happen at predictable times during the day. And having a regular bedtime routine as early as possible sets the stage for nighttime sleep, even if your baby isn't sleeping for very long durations. So now I'm going to go through different ages and stages uh, of infant and toddler sleep development as they relate to safety. So starting with 5 to 12 months, there are two sleep drives. There is the circadian rhythm, and there's sleep pressure. Sleep pressure is pretty intuitive. It's just the buildup of sleep need over time. And the circadian rhythm is your internal drive for sleep. The circadian rhythm matures over the course of the first year, whereas sleep pressure is pretty well established from birth. The circadian rhythm is set by light exposure. And so it's important to make sure that during sleep times, it's very dark in your child's room, and that you get outside for some light exposure during the day. You want to keep the lights out when it's not time to be awake. So here's a simple schematic of what sleep pressure is like. This is very intuitive. Basically, the number of hours you're awake, the more sleepy you'll feel. This is why infants can only stay awake for short periods of time throughout the day. The circadian rhythm is quite a bit more complicated. It doesn't just control sleep, but also controls hormone production in your body. and the feeling of wakefulness. And as you can see here, there are predictable times when sleep is promoted by the circadian rhythm. During the middle of the night, the circadian rhythm promotes sleep in order to allow you to stay asleep for an entire night. There are also fluctuations in alertness during the day when napping may be optimal. And then as you get towards your habitual bedtime, the drive for sleep starts again. Starting around four or five months, cool, dark, and quiet becomes very important. Sleep associations are the condi conditions under which you fall asleep. It's very important to allow your baby the chance to fall asleep independently. Because throughout the night, every 60 to 90 minutes, there's a brief arousal where we just check our environment and determine whether or not we're OK. But if our sleep environment has changed, meaning I'm a baby and I've fallen asleep in my mom's arms and I'm now waking up in the crib, it can be very disconcerting. And so if you allow your child the chance to fall asleep in the crib on his or her own, awake and aware, those natural arousals that have happened during sleep will become 
less problematic. In addition to the general sleep environment being cool, dark, and quiet, you want to consider using white noise. White noise isn't meant to induce sleep. It's really meant to protect sleep. And so if you have little creaks in the floorboard, if you live near a neighbor with a dog who's barking in the early morning hours, that can lead to a wake up for your child. But if you have a continuous white noise in your, room, in your child's room protecting sleep, that will allow more consolidation of sleep. When your child starts to roll, it's very important to transition out of this waddle. You want to maintain a safe sleep surface and don't use loose blankets. Instead of loose blankets, you'll want to transition to something like a sleep sack. Don't in introduce any stuffed animals at this point, and continue to put your baby to sleep on his or her back. But if your child starts to roll, it's probably OK. Just double check with your pediatrician. Once a baby has full motor control, it's usually uh, OK to allow your child to continue sleeping in that position. Often during motor skill milestones, babies will have disruptions during sleep. And so allowing your child to have lots of time on their stomach during the day will allow for faster mastery of these new motor skills and will allow for less disruption in sleep. When your child starts to stand, it's adorable, and it will happen all the time in the crib. <laughs> so make sure that you lower the crib mattress to the lowest position. Remove mobiles. You want your child to have access to anything surrounding the crib that could be dangerous, that could fall on them, that could come in and be a choking hazard. Make sure that you remove bumper pads, toys, or any other step stools. They really shouldn't be in the crib. And they can allow your child to catapult out. You don't want to have anything near the crib that could be a strangulation hazard. Particular, of particular concern are pull cords for blinds, um, the cord for your video monitor, a nearby lamp, a picture frame. Keep all of these things far away from your child's bed. When your child starts to sit and stand, again, there will be likely a sleep disruption with this motor skill milestone. So make sure that you allow your child lots and lots of time to practice during the day so that you minimize the disruption to nighttime. Now moving on to toddlers. From one to four years, uh, sleep, safe sleep considerations change just a little bit, as does sleep timing and other sleep concerns. So you want to try to keep your toddler in the crib until at least three if possible. Don't rush the transition from a crib to a bed. Think about it this way. When your child's in a crib, there aren't a lot of things that can be dangerous. You've made that space as safe as possible. But once your child is in a bed, he'll have the freedom to move around the room. And there are almost certainly things that would be unsafe in the room. And so keeping your child in the crib maintains a safer sleep environment for a longer period of time. Throughout toddlerhood, you want to have a consistent bedtime routine. And at this point, you can introduce an attachment object, so a little stuffed animal that your child can sleep with every night. If you do decide to use a nightlight, choose a nightlight that's in the yellow, orange, or amber red color. Uh, this will have a much lesser effect on the circadian rhythm. You want to avoid lights that are blue or green. It's very important to discourage crib climbing. Obviously, this is not a safe behavior, and it also typically leads to a faster transition to a bed. And I've already talked about some of the challenges with that. So of course, make sure that you lower the crib mattress to the lowest setting. And you may need to sit in the room with your child if he or she starts to climb out in order to prevent that climbing out. A good tip is to use a sleep sack. So a lot of people don't think about using a wearable sleeping bag after the first year. But really, at this time, it can be a great help because it prevents your child from being able to get that leg up and over the side of the crib. When it's time to transition to a toddler bed, again, hopefully at age three or older, you want to make sure that your child has a bed rail to prevent falls. Uh, especially younger toddlers will still roll around quite a bit in the, in the bed. And you want to make sure that you prevent the possibility or minimize the possibility that they'll fall out of the bed. You also really want to treat the room as a crib. As I mentioned before, your child's room has a lot of, likely has a lot of 
uh, unsafe features. So make sure that you put anti-tip straps on all of the furniture. Make sure you plug all of the electrical outlets. Consider using a gate for wanderers. You don't want your child leaving the room, going into the kitchen when you're in your bed. You don't want, certainly don't want your child potentially going out of the house. And so a gate provides that additional safety, keeps your child contained in the room. And again, discourage getting out of bed with a parent present. If your child does get out of bed, just be very matter of fact. Take him or her back to bed. Say good night. I love you. It's time to sleep. And then continue on. If your child continues to get out of bed, just to keep up the same routine. You want to make it as unexciting to get out of bed as possible. Once it's time to sleep, it's time to sleep. And you're setting the expectation that your child stay in bed. Throughout toddlerhood, you want to keep those routines and consistency. It's important that your child is ready for sleep when you're asking him to sleep. If you fluctuate bedtime by a few hours, night after night, you'll end up in a situation where you're trying to put your child to bed, and he or she isn't ready for sleep, and then you'll get a battle as a result. And so the more consistent your bedtime routine, the easier it will be in the long run. Naps usually hang around until at least age three, although some children will continue napping until age six. You want to make sure that that nap is centered in the day. You don't want it so early that your child isn't ready for sleep, but you also don't want it so late that it interferes with bedtime or leads to a very late bedtime. There will be many sleep changes during your child's first few years, from the timing of sleep to the number of naps that your child takes. Safety should always be your number one priority. Thank you for all of this wonderful information, Dr. Flynn Evans, and thank you for attending. If you are a family seeking more support around infant and toddler sleep, please remember that the ISIS Parenting Sleep Support Team offers a wide variety of resources, including live webinars, recorded archives, and phone-based sleep consultations for parents of newborns through age four. We also have an age and stage-based newsletter that we encourage you to sign up for. Please visit our website at isisparenting.com to sign up for this newsletter from pregnancy to preschool and see our online learning page to view many more free webinars. Thank you for attending this presentation.